Thank you, thank you, Patty. Thank thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so hello everyone. As Patty mentioned, uh, I my name is Nishij Mehra, and I'm a full stack uh, developer working with Publicis Sapient. And today I'm going to talk about a new JavaScript runtime that has been taking uh, the community by storm. The project has been built over an year by by a developer named Jared Sumner. And the beta version of this was released uh, a couple of months back. So this is very uh, this is very much new to the JS world. And I've been experimenting with it for last few weeks. And today I'm going to share with you my findings and experience. So let's let's get into it. Okay, so this is our agenda. And let's start with what the heck is a JavaScript runtime? So can you guys name one uh, JavaScript runtime? I shall have a look at the chat. Yeah, V8 is one. Anyone else? All right. So uh, let me start with what the, what a runtime is. So a runtime environment refers to where your code is executed. And in the context of JavaScript, the most popular runtime we come into contact with is our browser. So as uh, So you must have used Google Chrome a lot and Google Chrome uses V8 engine and similarly Mozilla uses SpiderMonkey. And if you want to run uh, JavaScript outside of the browser, then of course there's uh, Node and Dino. Okay, so runtime environments provide access to global objects for running a program to interact with. And a classic example is the access to the window object, which is part of the browser runtime. So this is just a very brief of what runtime is. I'm not going to go in, uh, deep, uh, deep into it. So this is a very funny uh, tweet, which I saw on YouTube. Uh, it says JavaScript developers got bored of reinventing libraries and frameworks, and they decided to go for the runtime itself. So all right, how did Ban start? Uh, I got a chance to speak uh, to the creator of Ban itself. So I got a chance to speak to Jared and uh, he shared his experiences about Ban, uh, what he thinks uh, uh, of Ban and how it started. So uh, he was building a game in Next.js and the code was around 100,000 lines and he got really frustrated with how slow everything was in the world of JavaScript. Like you save a file and then you have to wait for a few seconds uh, you have to wait for a few seconds to see your changes in the browser. And we all have been there. Like, I I believe if, uh, if you have worked on a medium to large scale applications in JavaScript, you must have uh, been into the scenario where you do a small copy change and then you have to wait for a few seconds to see your change into the browser. And when you're building a game, uh, you need a faster feedback loop, right? So he got really frustrated with the speed of the iteration cycle. And the first solution, which he thought was of using ES built with Next.js, but that didn't solve his problem. And he started spending a lot of time with the JS tooling. So he decided to build one for himself. And that's when he decided to build a bundler and a compiler. But then he didn't stop there. He was motivated by his previous experiences in Objective-C and gained insight into possible optimizations he could make to speed up JavaScript applications. So he ended up, he ended up uh, building a performance optimized runtime, which included a bundler, compiler, and a package manager. And now Bun has a baking company called Oven. So <laughs> what I really mean over here is, uh, so Oven is the company that will lead Bun's development, offer hosting, and uh, will grow Bun into an end-to-end -end, uh, solution for JavaScript. And it aims to support popular front-end frameworks such as Next.js, Wide, SwellKit, Solid Start, and many more. And the back-end frameworks such as Express, Fastify, Next.js, and more. So there are a lot of exciting things to watch out for. OK, so let's, what is BUN? Let's talk about what is BUN. Uh, so BUN describes itself as a JavaScript runtime, like Node or Dino with the goal of running most of the world's JavaScript outside of the browser, 
bringing performance and complexity enhancements to your future infrastructure, as well as developer productivity through better and simpler tooling. So it has three main focus, fast starts, high performance, and tool sets. BUN is uh, designed to be a drop-in replacement for JavaScript and TypeScript programs, and it natively implements many Node.js and web, web APIs with support of 90% of the Node API functions. And with the same module resolution algorithm as Node.js, using NPM packages and BUN is also supported. We'll discuss about the optimizations BUN make that speed up the module installation in a rare demo. So uh, we'll, we'll see the benchmarks ourselves. All right. So moving on, why is BUN exciting? So one of the things which excites me most about BUN is its performance. And you can see the benchmarks right here. If you see uh, the benchmarks of server-side rendering uh, or the SQLite or, or the BUN FFI, it is just, it is just amazing. So <clears throat> what makes BUN so performant? One of the key differences between BUN and uh, the current mainstream JavaScript runtimes is the choice of engine. Unlike Node or Dino, which uses the traditional V8 engine, BUN uses JavaScript core engine, which tends to start and perform a little faster than V8. Then BUN is written, is, uh, written, in, uh, written using Zig. So Zig's low level control over memory and its com time metaprogramming approach helped him write faster softwares. And that's not it. There's a lot of hard work which has gone into it and the creator has spent a lot of time profiling and performance boosting it. So if you can see the benchmarks, right? Uh, it's a GIF file, but uh, if you see the bun.serv, it says uh, uh, bun.serv can serve 48,000 HTTP requests per second, which is, which is way higher as compared to Node and Dino. And we'll see some of these benchmarks uh, uh, right in, uh, in in our demo, in our little demo. So what if I told you I can install the node modules 20x faster? That's pretty exciting, right? So let's get into a short demo where we install some of the packages and see how fast BUN is, whether the benchmarks are right or... Okay, so uh, one sec. Yeah. So what I've done here is I've taken a package.json file, which is a package.json file for a simple React application. And I'm going to install those packages using uh, npm and uh, using npm install and bun install. So let me just show the package.json file to you. So this is the package.json file, which has uh, basic React packages, some material UI libraries, and testing library packages. Okay, so <clears throat> all right. So let's do a bun install first. I'll do bun install. Okay. Let's see how much time this takes. Okay, this took this took barely seven seconds. Now let us uh, install the same packages using npm. So, I have the same package.json file over here. Let me just quickly open and show it to you. Yeah, it's the same package.json file with some React libraries, testing library, material UI modules. So I'll do a npm install over here. Okay, this is gonna take some by some time. All right. So, meanwhile, uh, let me just talk about uh, bun install a little bit. So when we when we do a bun install, bun generates a log file similar to npm or yarn. And you can uh, sorry just. Let's just let it finish and then I'll I'll go on to bun because otherwise it won't make sense. And it, it is going on and on. I think it is more than 20, 25 seconds. Yeah, it installed 1600 package in 45 seconds. So it's like half the time, even less, 
less than half. So as you can see, BAN is, is very fast in installation. Okay, now let us see the BAN log file. So I'll do, yeah, as you can see this BAN.logB, this BAN.logB is a binary file, okay? So uh, why is it binary? There's a one word answer for this, that is performance. BAN's log file saves and loads uh, incredibly quickly, and it saves a lot more data than what a typical uh, uh, log file saves. So it has it stores metadata for packages, uh, and uh, it has the install order dependencies for each packages, and what packages those dependencies resolve to. And if there is an integrity hash, it stores the integrity hash as well. But there's a downside of using this uh, log file. Uh, and the downside is you cannot do a comparison. What if you do a bun add and you install a module using bun add and something goes wrong with the log file? How do you check the differences, right? So uh, there is an option for that. You can do a bun install hash y, which would, which would uh, output the log file as yarn does. And then you can do a diff and see uh, see the difference in the log file. But there's a, there's a way around it, but not a straightforward way. So yeah, it has both pros and cons of having a binary log file. All right, so moving on. Yeah, as you can see the benchmarks over here as well, the benchmarks of using BAN, YARN, NPM and PNP and BAN is way too fast. Okay, so uh, there are some more optimization which BAN does and one of the main optimization lies in the differences in the system calls used for IO operations, BAN uses hard links over copying files wherever possible. The main optimization is the system calls used to copy link files. To see the difference, uh, you can compare uh, BAN install with backend as copy file and uh, do a BAN install with backend as hard link and hard link, is, uh, uh, hard link is used by default. But that will give you the difference. The other big optimization is the binary format for both log files and the manifest, as we have just seen. Uh, BUN's dependency graph is particularly fast to iterate through due to small optimizations, such as uh, using arrays per field rather than big objects. And uh, BUN uses blocking synchronous I.O. by default. And when all I.O. is async, you, you spend a lot of time queuing up an event loop. So that way synchronous IO, uh, it helps speeding up the process. So moving on, the next exciting thing about BUN is its tooling. So as it says, it comes in, it's an, it's an all-in-one solution, which includes uh, native bundler, transpiler, task runner, and an NPM client. So you don't you don't need to piece together various tools. If you're using the React, you don't need to worry about oh, do I need to use Webpack or what what bundler I have to use, what transpiler I have to use. Then uh, it has uh, it has a built-in transpiler, so you can uh, you can use uh, TypeScript uh, just like like you can you can directly write your code in TypeScript, and you don't need to worry of the uh, worry about the transpiler because uh, there is an inbuilt transpiler in place which will transpile your TypeScript files into JSX and uh, uh, and you don't have to worry about the bundling and everything. Then uh, as developers experience, uh, as we, we noticed a lot of issues while uh, playing around with one, Bun and uh, one of the benchmarks uh, uh, which we saw uh, where Bun slows down is with the use of async and await. So async and await bun benchmark benchmark shows slower performance while using uh, when using await keyword. And uh, there is there is a workaround uh, to it. Like if you don't use async and await, you can obviously uh, use uh, promise dot resolve instead. But that's not a good developer experience. So there are some uh, uh, benchmarks which still which are still slow and uh, which still needs to be worked upon. But otherwise, it looks it looks really cool, and uh, there is 
there is one more thing where uh, where the performance uh, increases is the way uh, the bundling happens in bun so whenever you create a package the package is created in a binary format rather than like if you do if you see a normal react application or an xjs application nowadays and when you bundle that it bundles the uh, it creates a zip file and the zip file has your javascript files in it but in bun when you create a bundle it creates a binary uh, file out of that which is really interesting uh, in how that executes into the browser and then it converts that into a javascript and we'll see that in the next demo which we are going to do so let's let's get on with it so the next demo which we are going to do is we are going to install uh, we are going to create a nextjs application using bun and uh, we are going to do three things over here the first one is create a Next.js application using BAN, then create a Next.js application using the npx command, and then we'll see the difference of how quickly you can uh, create a Next.js application using BAN and run it. Then uh, the next thing which we are going to do is we are going to take the existing uh, node application, which we created using npx, and then we'll try to convert it to BAN. And there are uh, three basic uh, steps to do that. So let's just, let's get right into it. Sorry. Yeah. So I will quickly create a bun application using the bun create command, a Next.js application using bun with bun create script. So bun create next. And I'll give it bun next demo. And it hardly took a second and it created the Next.js application. Okay, I'll just do. Okay, so let's just let's just try and run this. Run next demo. If you can see, it has the node modules package.json and uh, it has the public pages. Uh, I should open this in VS and show it to you, but before Doing that, let's just do a bun dev and run this application. And this would start the dev server. Okay, and let's just go to localhost 3000. Yep, so our next year's application is running using bun over here. And you can see this bundled file. This is a dot bun uh, format, and uh, that is basically a binary file, binary format, but it runs the JavaScript into the browser. Okay, now moving on. Let's create an Next.js application using the npx command. So I'll do npx create. Create next step. Sorry. And Okay, not bad. It took six seconds, which is not bad. All right. So let me just open my Visual Studio code. Just give me a moment for that. Sorry. So we're here. So this is the this is the application, Next.js application, which was created using bun. And it has the bun log b file. And uh, this is the config file which bun uses, where we define the framework as next. OK, so we are going to perform uh, some steps to convert the, the uh, Next.js application, which we created using the npx command. 
So this is the application which we created using the npx command. And we'll try to run this using bun. Instead of node, uh, we'll, we'll try to use it, using, uh, use it through bun instead of node. So I will go into my bun. Sorry about the gaps. No. NPM demo. Okay. So the first thing which I'll do over here is I'll add the bun uh, framework next package. And now I have to add the framework as next to the bunfig.tml file, which we just saw in the uh, application, which was created using bun. This will tell bun that we are using the framework as next. And right now they just support next as the framework here, but, they apply, but I believe they are going to add few more frameworks to this. Fig.tml. And this is this is the fun part. So if you want to bundle a, an application which is created using bun, you do bun bun. And there was an interesting tweet regarding this as well. So uh, I think someone on Discord posted a comment asking, why is the bundler called as bun bun instead of the obvious bun bundle? And uh, Jared responded to that saying that he found it cute. And it is actually cute. So uh, as you can see here, when we did bun bun, it bundled the, it bundled and created some packages, which I believe we can see it over here. Yep, you can see the uh, dot bun files being created. Now I can, I'll just do a bun dev to run this application, and we can go to the localhost three thousand. I'll just do a refresh over here. And yep, we can see our Nexus application running with Bun. So that is it uh, uh, for the demo. And uh, I would be wrapping up the presentation with some of my thoughts. Yep. So uh, the project is, as you can see, the project is still in its infancy. Uh, there is a lot of promise here, but there's still a lot of work to be done before this can be used as a production tool. And uh, uh, so what, what I have demo demoed here is a very basic Next.js application, which we've tried to uh, my, uh, move it to bun from, we have tried to move it to bun from node. But for the larger applications, there are uh, still a lot of packages which are not supported by BUN, and one of them being Express. And Express is a widely used uh, NPM package uh, across the front-end applications. So uh, there's, there's still a lot of uh, work to be done on that bit. And uh, the there are some of the core bundling features, such as tree shaking, source maps, code splitting, which are there on the roadmap which is yet to be implemented and documentation is still work in progress so we heavily uh, heavily relied on the discord community and wherever whenever i had any issues uh, with you know running an application i also created a react application using bun and whenever i had any issues uh, with bun i used to go to the discord community paste the error and the uh, and uh, uh, jared himself will uh, you know, reply to all your uh, uh, issues. He's very active in the community and uh, he makes sure that uh, he responds, to, he provides a response to your issues. So if you are uh, giving it a try and if you face any issues, do go to the Discord community. Someone or the other will be there to help you out. And uh, there was another question which we asked uh, Jared of how can we use BAN in its current state? and. Uh, uh, he said that uh, we can we can use bun install obviously because it is very fast it's way too faster than any other package managers and we can also use the bun run script which also has uh, uh, which is also faster than the npm run scripts so these are the two things which we can do with the uh, with bun in its current state and having said that uh, i would i would wrap the session now 
and uh, I started experimenting with bun as a curiosity, but it's it it looks promising, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on what's coming next. Uh, hey, Nishi, hey. I, I, oh, I got no, a question. No, no. I'm not sure if you're <coughs> taking questions, but I have got a question. So, so far, I mean, uh, you said it rightly that it's a very uh, infant at this stage and probably not suited for uh, application yeah. development in a production environment. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> one thing which I liked, and I think it's the USP as well, is the bun install, which is ridiculously fast. Yeah. So is it possible that I use bun as a package manager instead of using as a runtime? So I just use it to install node modules because node modules, sometimes they take ages to download. So yeah. if I do that bun install and then the rest of the activities I take uh, yeah. as a node activity, will that still work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that works. I have tried that, that works. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's good. Yeah, bun install is like it's freakingly fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, at the first moment when I it said that okay, it's done, I was thinking my first, you know, sometimes with Node, whenever it finishes really fast, I go back and I check whether it did it really or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that word that was my first thought as well like when i did bun create uh, i created a react application with bun initially and i did bun create cre uh, create the react application and like within a second it created the application i was like okay something is wrong here something is definitely wrong but <laughs> it was working so yeah all right i don't think we have do we have any questions there is no questions on the chat and i don't know if anyone else has any question and if not uh nishi can you share your your social media accounts on your contact just in case anyone can wants to reach out to you if they have yeah. any questions or comments yep yep i'll share my linkedin uh, linkedin account details and you can reach me on LinkedIn or on Twitter, but I'm more active on LinkedIn. So, yeah, Gary is saying that uh, he knew that Bond would be outside his skill set and knowledge. But you know, Gary, there's always you know room to improve our skill sets and to learn new technologies. So, um, I think uh, attending this kind of sessions is a good start for you. So hopefully we can see you soon doing some some stuff with with Bon. All right. Yeah. Well, I I think that's it. Um, and thank you so much, Nishi, for for joining us. It was an amazing session. And and yeah, thanks everyone for joining. And this this session, um, we're planning to upload it to our YouTube channel. So stay tuned. Thank cool. you, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Patty. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.